Hi Curious, and welcome back! April 22nd this year marks the 95th birthday of Queen Elizabeth, and while such celebrations are a cause for happiness for anyone this year, the British monarch will not only celebrate it differently due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, but also due to the fact that just a few days prior, she had buried her husband of nearly 74 years, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. So it is safe to assume that due to both of these factors, her special day will look different. But just how different will it look compared to the pre-COVID times? Why does the Queen celebrate two birthdays to begin with? And will those celebrations be cancelled as well? Is Prince Harry going to stay and celebrate with his grandmother? And could there be some changes in the monarchy? Stay with us until the very end to find out how Elizabeth II is going to celebrate. But before we continue, don't forget to turn on the notifications and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our future videos. At the age of 95 and having sat on the British throne for 69 years, Queen Elizabeth II is the longest reigning monarch in the British history. And while for many celebrating their birthday is a joyous occasion which they spend surrounded by their close ones, this year's celebration will be much different for the Queen. Not only due to the ongoing pandemic, but also she is still mourning after the passing of her husband. We're not going to talk too much about their relationship, as we have a separate video about their love story that you can check out by clicking on the link above. But for now, stay with us as we have a look at the Queen and how she celebrated her birthday normally and how it will much differ this year. Elizabeth Windsor was born on April 21st and she was crowned the Queen at the age of 27. So as you can see, she has dedicated most of her life to her country. So how has this monarch usually celebrated her special day? As some of you might have noticed, the Queen's birthday is celebrated twice, in April and then in June, the reason for which we'll tell you in a moment so make sure you stick around. For the most part, her actual birthday is a day that she spends with her family and close ones. And while a big fanfare and celebrations take place in June, there are several gun salutes at midday on April 21st which take place at the Tower of London and Hyde Park. Last year, for the first time in her 69-year reign, the official day passed without the customary salutes, and that was due to the Queen's wishes that no special measures were taken while the coronavirus pandemic persisted. And this year's celebration will pass without a gun salute for the second time, but this time it's due to the fact that she's still mourning the loss of Prince Philip. The news was confirmed by a spokesperson of the British Ministry of Defense, and she is supposed to observe the period of mourning until Friday, April 23rd, and as such, it is surely understandable that she wouldn't want to to celebrate. But when it comes to celebrating with her family, does Elizabeth II have any traditions? Apparently yes, and that tradition is a cake, but not just a simple cake ordered from some bakery or bought at a supermarket. According to former royal chef Darren McGrady, who had worked for both Her Majesty and Princess Diana, revealed what goes on behind closed doors. And as it turns out, the private celebrations are normally marked with a chocolate birthday cake from a recipe that has been passed down through generations of royals. And according to him, it dates back to Queen Victoria herself and was written by her chef Gabriel Tshumi as long as 1899. Elizabeth's chef had fine-tuned it and made it twice a year on her official birthday in June and her real birthday. Clearly, it must be a good cake if the family has kept making it throughout all those years. This is pretty much how she has celebrated her birthday every year since taking up the throne with the exception of 2006 and 2016 when she celebrated her 80th and 90th birthdays with a walkabout around Windsor where she also met with thousands of well-wishers. And this year, the monarch is expected to have a quiet lunch with close family members at Windsor Castle, the details of which will remain private. But do we know who will spend the day with the monarch? According to the Sun, Princess Anne and Sophie, the Countess of Wessex, will be among the first to spend time with the Queen. The two women are reportedly the ones who are Elizabeth II's support following the days after the funeral. Prince Andrew, Princess Eugenie, and her newborn son, August, are also set to visit her in the coming days. As per the Mirror, it is unsure whether all of these visits will happen on the same day or throughout the week. Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, is also set to pay a visit. As reported by the Sun, members of the family will take it in turn to walk around the Windsor Castle grounds with her and her two new corgi puppies. And while it has also not been revealed who will be at the lunch, it would be safe to assume that it could possibly be Prince Charles and maybe his son Prince William, as there are rumors that the Queen will announce she's stepping down from the throne, but more about that in a moment, so make sure you stick around until the end. If you want to find out what the everyday life of the royal family looks like and what things they cannot eat or cannot do, we invite you to check out our video, the link which is currently being displayed on the screen and which is on our brand new channel, Curious Sips Wow, where we upload videos about the shocking, weird, and incredible things. So don't forget to hit the subscription button while you're there and always be up to date. Now back to our main topic. 
One of the biggest questions that people had been asking is whether Prince Harry will stick around, though the answer to that is unclear. Most British press has been reporting that the Duke of Sussex will stick around until his grandmother's special day before returning to California. Originally, he was supposed to jet back on Monday, but as the Mirror had reported, following the two-hour peace talks with William and their father after the funeral, he allegedly has booked an open ticket. A royal source told the Sun that if all goes well, he'll stay until the monarch's birthday, and it has also been reported that Harry will join his brother for the unveiling of Princess Diana's memorial statue at Kensington Palace on July 1st. Either way, it seems that no matter what, the 95-year-old Elizabeth won't be without her family. But now to answer the question that might be confusing some of you. Why does the Queen celebrate her birthday twice? And if you are fans of the royal family, then many of you have surely heard of Trooping the Color, which takes place every year on the second Saturday of June, which this year would be on the 12th. To sum up the main event, it is a big parade which ends with military planes flying over, leaving behind smoke in the colors of the British flag. And Trooping the Color was first performed by military purposes under King Charles II in the 1600s, and the parade became an official part of the British calendar a century later. The reason a monarch celebrates their official birthday that day was started by George II back in 1748, and it was actually due to the British weather. The king was born in November, and he felt that it would be too cold on his real birthday to host the celebrations, then so he consequently decided to combine the celebration with the annual military parade. And as you can see, Curious, this is a tradition that has continued to this day, with all British sovereigns being given the option of having an official birthday. So given that the Queen's real birthday is April 12th, she chose to have an official birthday. And when she first ascended to the throne, she chose to hold her official birthday on the second Thursday of June, the same day as her father's. But in 1959, the monarch decided that her official birthday should be held two days later on the second Saturday of the month, and it has been the same ever since. To give you a more detailed description of what the parade looks like, we'll give you a quick rundown. So during the parade, the Queen inspects soldiers from the Household Division on Horse Guards Parade in Whitehall. The display of pageantry features 1,400 different officers and men on parade, 200 horses, and 400 musicians from 10 bands. The Queen always attends and takes the salute. The official parade begins when the monarch departs Buckingham Palace in a carriage that is accompanied by a sovereign's escort from the Household Cavalry Mounted Regiment at 10 a.m. local time, before she would arrive on a riding horse wearing military uniform of regiment, being trooped but stopped doing that since 1987, which given that she was 61 at the time, most likely had something to do with her age. And once all of those inspections had been carried out and the soldiers have marched past the Queen, she returns to Buckingham Palace for a second salute. And that is the thing that many of you are surely familiar with, as that is where she is joined by other members of the royal family on the balcony of the palace. And she has taken that salute every single year since becoming the Queen, besides in 1955 when there was a national rail strike. However, as you probably guessed, it's due to the COVID lockdown restrictions, last year looked a bit different. The Welsh Guard and Mass Band of the Household Division led scaled-down celebrations at Windsor Castle. Though, what is impressive is that the socially distanced ceremony was pulled together in just two weeks of rehearsals, and the royal family watched from their homes instead of making their own balcony appearances. And as for this year, on their official website, the Household Division had made an announcement that said, following government consultations, it was agreed that once again Trooping the Colors will not go ahead in its traditional form in central London, and that options for another alternative parade at Windsor castle are being considered but no certain answer has been given yet. Though this could all depend on whether the rumors are true as more British press seems to suggest that the possibility that on her birthday the Queen might step down from the throne. And in a chat with True Royalty TV's The Royal Beat, expert Robert Jobson had said that he firmly believes that when the monarch turns 95 she will step down. And royal commentator Roz Weston talked with ET Canada Live and also gave his thoughts on the rumors though he took a very interesting take on it, what it would mean for Prince Charles if she stepped down. I think when she does leave, Charles needs it to be all about Charles. And if the Queen is still around, it won't become all about Charles. Stick it through, this is what she's done her whole life. Though, like most people, royal experts and internet users believe the Queen will rule until she passes. Author Richard Fitzwilliams doesn't see any truth to those rumors and pointed out that in 1947, the Queen swore to serve her whole life and that as a deeply religious person, she meant every word of it. However curious, we can speculate on this all day but in reality, only time will tell what will actually happen within the monarchy. So curious, what are your thoughts on how the Queen celebrates her birthday? 
Did you know why she celebrates twice? And do you think Prince Harry has stayed to be with her on her special day? And do you reckon the Queen will abdicate the throne or continue serving until her final days? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel, as well as check out our brand new one, Curious Sips Wow! Until next time!